Birds of the San Joaquin River National Wildlife Refuge by Jim Gain. What if I had never seen this before? What if I knew I would never see it again? Rachel Carson At over 20,000 square miles in size, the Central Valley is one of the largest California geographical provinces and is the home and the setting for the San Joaquin River National Wildlife Refuge. Generally, the valley is divided into two parts, with the northern area, collectively known as the Sacramento Valley, and the southern area known as the San Joaquin Valley. Central Valley Looking Back Vast expanses of freshwater marshes made the San Joaquin Valley a haven for wildlife. For thousands of years, the valley has been a major wintering ground for waterfowl and shorebirds migrating along the Pacific Flyway, an ancient superhighway for birds stretching from northern Alaska south into Central and South America. Historical accounts depict flocks of ducks and geese large enough to darken the sky. In the past, the banks of the San Joaquin River and its tributaries overflowed with winter rainwater and spring snowmelt from the Sierra Nevada mountains. As summer progressed, the sun-baked basins dried. Fall and winter rains recharged the river and seasonal wetlands starting the cycle all over again. The late 1800s, livestock ranchers began draining the lush wetlands and altering natural waterways to create a landscape more favorable to grazing. Farming also proved prosperous on the rich alluvial soils. In the 1940s, a succession of large water projects designed to secure and store a water supply for agriculture further altered the natural hydrology of the valley. Quoting Aldo Leopold, like winds and sunsets, wild things were taken for granted until progress began to do away with them. Now we face the question whether a still higher standard of living is worth its cost in things natural, wild, and free. What is the cost? What is the standard of living taking away from us? Vernal pools have gone down 66% since the pre-1900s. Freshwater wetlands are down 90%. And native grasslands and riparian woodlands are both down 99% from where they were pre-1900s. President Roosevelt said it best, Of all the questions which can come before this nation, there is none which compares in importance with the great central task of leaving this land even a better land for our descendants than it is for us. But how? How do we get from where we were to where we want to be? How do we get the water, the land needed for our descendants to enjoy? What is it going to take? It's going to take people. It's going to take land and water and lots and lots of water. On the website for the water resource management, we see them state, nothing is more important to wildlife than abundant and clean water. Rachel Carson said, there is something infinitely healing in the repeated refrains of nature, the assurance that dawn comes after night and spring after winter. But for our descendants to enjoy that healing, we must first heal the environment. In 1987, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service created the San Joaquin River National Wildlife Refuge with the primary purpose of meeting the wintering habitat objectives of the Aleutian Canada Goose Recovery Plan. With funds donated by Joseph Long and Don Lundberg in 1987, the Stanislaus Audubon Society and California Audubon Society purchased the 777 acres parcel of land known as Chrisman Island. Previously, it was the home of a 
immense heron and egret rookery. In 1988, the service purchased Christmas Island from the National Audubon Society. In his vision statement, it says, the refuge will be managed to conserve, protect, and enhance native communities of the San Joaquin Valley with a focus on wildlife and the ecological processes on which they depend. It takes people like Kim Forrest and Eric Hobson and others from the Fish and Wildlife Service. It takes the local community such as the Stanislaus Audubon Society, the Yokut Sierra Club, the California Native Plant Society, and local colleges and schools. It takes everyone to come together to support this precious resource. But most importantly, it takes water, lots and lots of water, the 1992 Central Valley Project Improvement Act, CVPIA, created the Refuge Water Supply Program, which includes 19 wetland habitat areas in the Central Valley. Water for wetland management is a challenge, especially at the refuge, as it is not a CVPIA refuge. The refuge, therefore, has a piecemeal program to provide wetland flooding through expensive river pumping an MID contract and the use of agricultural tailwater. So what are the different habitat types that a person might find at the refuge? Well, the most expansive and visual to our visitors would be the freshwater wetlands. There are also seasonal ponds, riparian woodlands, and grasslands or pasture lands which provide the corn and alfalfa that our wintering waterfowl depend on to survive and get through our cold winters. But how can visitors access the refuge? The best location to visit the refuge would be at the Pelican Nature Trail at the end of Dairy Road. With over four and a half miles of trail there's lots of access to wetlands, riparian woodlands, and one may also get a glance at the very popular and important riparian brush rabbit. At the end of Beckwith Road, west of Modesto, is the observation platform that is visited by hundreds of people in the wintertime to observe the wintering waterfowl that come in to feed on the corn and alfalfa. There are also monthly tours provided by the Stanislaus Audubon Society, which unfortunately are on hold for now, and in the future, we will likely see the opportunity for volunteers to help out the Fish and Wildlife Service with some of the different wildlife surveys that they so desperately need our assistance with. Using the Cornell eBird app online, birders at the refuge can contribute much to the knowledge of the local bird populations. So far at the San Joaquin River National Wildlife Refuge, 520 eBirders have submitted 2,430 checklists with 240 unique bird species, and of those 240, 196 have been submitted with photographs. Any discussions about the birds at the refuge generally include terms like residency and abundancy. These are terms that describe when and how many birds of a particular species are present at the refuge. So referring to residency, you have a variety of terms to use and resident refers to a bird that is present all year long, like a Canada goose. If you look at the bar graph here, you can see that it's present throughout the year. Birds like Ross's geese and snow geese are winter visitors coming here only in the winter months. Migrants like Wilson's warblers, willow flycatchers are only passing through heading to their nesting locations or returning from there. Summer visitors like the Swainson's hawk are coming here specifically to nest and are not found generally in the winter time. And then we get the occasional stray bird that's a vagrant that should not be here and is completely lost. 
that is bird residency. When talking about how many birds would be there, that is a reference to their abundance. And for abundance, we use terms like common, fairly common, uncommon, or rare. And as you see on the bar graphs, the brant would be the representative of rare, and Canada goose, red-tailed hawk would be examples of common, species that are very numerous throughout the year. For each of the birds in the slideshow that follows, you will see a code listed that indicates their residency and abundance. For example, when you see a Canada goose, it will also include the little c, big R, for common resident. Ross's goose would have a little c, common, and a big W for winter, and so on, with Swainson's hawk and willow flycatcher. To quote Ralph Waldo Emerson, To the attentive eye, each moment of the year has its own beauty, and in the same field it beholds every hour a picture which was never seen before, and which shall never be seen again. Now enjoy the Parade of Birds at the San Joaquin River National Wildlife Refuge.